I'm Zoe with the Calcasieu Parish Public Library, and today I'm recommending two fiction books that are great for horror fans or readers who are interested in giving horror a try. And these are both adult fiction books, a little bit frightening, so not recommended for younger readers. The first book I want to share with you today is called The Luminous Dead. This is a sci-fi psychological horror, and it's one of my favorite books from 2019. The main character's name is Jire Price, and Jire desperately wants to leave her planet. But the fastest way to make money is to work as a caver, diving deep into the earth to look for mineral deposits. Just one cave run would pay enough to get off world forever, if she survives. Caving is a dangerous job. The caves are full of steep drops and flooded tunnels and the tunnelers, which are these monsters that swim through solid rock. And the only way to survive is to go in alone. But Jire is really desperate, so she fakes her credentials and she gets hired as a caver. She's deposited in the cave and her only company is her handler's voice and her earpiece. The handler's name is M, and she's safely watching Jire's vital signs from miles away. But as she gets deeper into the cave, Jaya realizes this may not be a routine cave expedition. And M may not be telling her the whole truth. If you like slow build horror, this is the book for you. It's well written and nearly impossible to put down. But if this isn't really your style and you'd prefer something a little bit more whimsical, you might like Meddling Kids. You can probably tell that Meddling Kids bases its formula off of Scooby-Doo. Four kids and a dog spend every summer in the sleepy town of Blighton Hills, solving crimes and unmasking villains. But in the summer of 1977, the Sleepy Lake Monster case didn't wrap up quite as neatly as usual. They caught the bad guy, but they can't get that night out of their heads. Now it's 1990, and the kids are all grown up, but they're still haunted by that last case. One finished college, only to find herself plagued by nightmares, one spent time in jail, and one is living in a mental hospital haunted by the ghost of the forest. Each of them can trace their problems back to that night. So three kids, a ghost and a dog, jump into a van and head back to Blighton Hills to finally solve the mystery. This book may rely on Scooby-Doo nostalgia to hook its readers, but it quickly diverges from its source material. It perfectly toes the line between horror and comedy as your childhood cartoon characters struggle with psychological scars and real monsters. It's also a good middle ground for readers who have never tried horror before. I loved these books and I hope you will too. If either story sounds good to you, they are both available at your local library. And check back every week for more programs and book recommendations from your local library.